That's why I said roll the cameras. Why? One take, one marker. Can we, wait, 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 Chris. Chris, I feel like too much effort has been put in this for it to be neglected. He's a palm tree boy. That is a very cute shirt. He's a palm tree man. <laughs> On his hat, too. Why, when it's in-person episodes, do we fight? We're not fighting. I'm complimenting Chris on his palm tree again. No, I know. But like, there's always so much, um, I feel like built up, not even tension, but built up energy between the two. Like, Is it because you want to, do you want to kiss me? When we're virtual, I feel like there's all this respect where we like listen to each other because there's a lag and then we're in person and we just like bite each other's heads off. I think in a good way, like brother and sister. What are you talking about? Get to the point. Uh, nothing. I, you were like, I felt like you were chewing my head off the second we were rolling. No, I'm so sorry you felt that way. <laughs> Should we tongue kiss and make up? <laughs> Stop teasing me. I come here every day with teeth brushed, ready for a tongue kiss. Oh my gosh. Well, I was ready early for once. Like the one time I'm early, I'm like standing out front. Like, where is everybody tracking and calling? <laughs> I'm always like finishing the document and 15 minutes late. And the one time I'm early, I'm just this big old nightmare. But you know what? Do you track Chris too? Well, I don't have Chris's location. I'm afraid to have Chris's location. I don't know what he's doing out there in Bakersfield. <laughs> <laughs> Eating crumble cookies galore. Well, Chris, if you want to hear us, uh, your headset's right over there. I mean, he can hear us. Well, he's in the same room as us. <laughs> what if I want him to talk? Oh, cool. What cool, if cool. I need to confront him? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, we want him to be confrontable. Uh, oh, oh, you no, know, I'm Chris, scared. I had a lot of people in my real life very concerned about, like, reaching out to me. <laughs> Uh, with concerns in regard to you, which also made me feel good about myself knowing that so many people that I actually know listen to the podcast. Oh, really? Well, yeah, it proved it to me because they How were worried about How many people do you Chris. actually know? Well, not your that mom. Many. Is it your mom? Was it your mom and Morgan? You can tell me. <laughs> Both of them. Shane's mom. And maybe one other inquiry. Who <laughs> was it? Your Lizzie. So okay, Lizzie. <laughs> I have different beef with you. What the fuck? She gets upset when I track when I don't track her. True. But you you won't find out how to track me. Like what if? Oh, I'm, I don't know how to look at it. What if I get stolen? I would know because Shane doesn't know. No, you wouldn't. Oh, I would. Yeah, I would give the police my phone. I would say I track him. <laughs> you have to figure out how to open it. But I do. I know my phone knows where his. You're phone not is. curious though where the people that you're allowed to track are like. It's like checking Instagram. It's I like, where are my friends? Yeah, I know. I mean, I don't think to, but I was in San Diego this weekend and I was telling my friends like, oh yeah, Rylan tracks me. It's like, he checks everyone's location. Like we check Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> they were like, that's fucking weird. And I was like, yeah, kind of, I guess. You have to find something to replace uh, being on social media so frequently. <laughs> so, you, so you wiretap us. <laughs> hey. If you ever disappear, I'll be the first to know. I know, and that's what I tell everyone. But I told Joe, I said, Joe, make sure you have Ryland's phone number. So if I go missing, you can call him and find my body. Shane can't figure out how to turn his on, so I need somebody to track me. I, I, tr I do. Okay, all right. Well, we should en <laughs> enter the show. We should enter it. Good morning. Good Wednesday morning. <laughs> it's 914, and we're going live. <laughs> Hello, you guys, and welcome back to another episode of The Sip. I'm Ryland Adams, of course, joined by... Elizabeth Homo, okay. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the podcast. Welcome back to reality. Oh, there goes gravity? Is that... No? Okay. I lost you. It was an Eminem <laughs> reference, but I think I did it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there goes gravity. Oh, All right, so gravity. what revelations did you have this week? Um, The first of which was I would like to bring back a previous topic um i believe on our first episode of this year i mentioned that i believe perhaps queen elizabeth of england was already dead <laughs> oh you are ridiculous it was ridiculous <laughs> then it's ridiculous now you need to take a break no, from tiktok I'm, no, no no i'm saying i think that was wrong I know, but I'm saying the uh, the amount in which you believed it was real. I mean, is all boiled down to how much TikTok you consume. You sound and like someone trying to convince yourself it's okay because you've shit on too many papers for reptilians. <laughs> Did you forget that warning? No, I remember. You remember you're not supposed to poop on papers for other people, no matter how well you know them. Chris, you too. Stop pooping on papers for people. I mean, this seems like when you made up that Cardi B didn't like. No, that was different. That was different. That was on some 
none of my business shit. Like just making stuff up out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. But the other things are real. Okay, so she's been she's made an appearance or something. No, she had that that. Uh, so they were all saying that they were the queen was going to make it to her seventieth jubilee or whatever. What are you doing? <laughs> What do you? Why would you do that? Oh, okay. <laughs> oh my gosh! Um, she made it. She made it to her seventieth jubilee. Okay. And they have not announced that she died in her sleep last night. Thank you for the update. Well, I'm just saying. I, I've been on the edge of my seat. Well, I had to keep the audience informed. Mm -hmm. So Queen Elizabeth's still alive. We Lizzie, heard it here first. Lizzie folks. called me this weekend <laughs> and said maybe the most upset. What did you say about me coming up with audience? Oh, it was the most upsetting thing I've ever that you've ever done. Because you're jealous. I mean, I'm jealous and it's disgusting. How's that different? Any different, if not better, than you calling your audience my audience? Well, that's just because I don't know what to call them. <laughs> the audience. <laughs> the audience. <laughs> I guess the audience is a collective, though. Yeah, it your sounds like audience. a potty. Do you know what I mean? Yes, but it's not. It sounds like an audience to me going potty. <laughs> Oh my God. Do you see why it makes me uneasy? <laughs> I had flashbacks to last night. Was someone watching you go potty? No. What happened last night? I had my... <laughs> <laughs> if you're eating lunch or breakfast with Is us... Is this a hemorrhoid skip... situation? <laughs> no, 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 no. But skip ahead. If you... Honestly, I... Bl well, oh gosh. I did have... A... I don't like frequently have hemorrhoids. I'm not like a hemorrhoid boy. I don't want to like <laughs> promote that I'm like always having hemorrhoids. I got the hemorrhoids from... <laughs> doing a lot of heavy lifting and masculine work i because we had a, a bed in our like primary bedroom in colorado but the bed we had been waiting for forever had finally arrived but they had built it in the guest bedroom so i had to do all the breakdowns of both and switcheroos yeah and lifting and shane was helping me edit a video at that time so i said well i'll do all of the the manual labor myself yeah and carrying all of those, I'm convinced, is what gave me a hemorrhoid, like lifting out of proportions. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's what everyone was thinking. Uh, a little bit of preparation H for a few days, extra strength, took it right away. I need some preparation H under my eyes right now. I feel like I'm a like, <laughs> sunken mess. Like, hey guys, I had a lot of Welch's grape juice this weekend and I'm a fucking mess. <laughs> So back back to it. So somebody, what what made you think of an audience while you're going potty last night? Well, I had my first ever like weird encounter with a fart. <laughs> what do you mean? You needed, there's so many words. I had, that like, added. I had like a Lizzie situation. You shit your pants? Well, I thought I was gonna. Fart. Why are you calling it a Lizzie situation? Because <laughs> you're always shitting your pants. Oh my god! You're literally never not shitting your pants I'm on this podcast specifically. You're like. In McDonald's drive through I shit my pants. I did shit my pants at a McDonald's drive through It's demoralizing. For the first time ever, I had like a real blower, but it blew. A blower? Oh no. Where did you shit your pants? In the house? Were you in the house? Is that oh, why your oh, panties no. are on the chair I'm taking? It's are those so, shit panties uh, on the chair? And Shane was in the kitchen. I was in the kitchen walking towards the bathroom. Okay. And I thought it was a fart, so I thought it was like a false <laughs> alarm. And then it was really like a blower. Oh no! <laughs> but like, <laughs> you blew out your, you shit your pants. Did you shit your pants? Well, I wouldn't classify it like it wasn't like a fool. <laughs> Did you shit your pants? What do you classify as shit in your pants? <laughs> Did, was there shit in your pants? Was it enough shit to like? Was it squishing around? No. Well, you know me, I don't wear was underwear around the house. <laughs> so I had my loose. Chris, I fucking hate him. <laughs> I've also been doing that thing again. Where, like Shane called me out saying like, hey, there's still underwear. Yeah, there's panties on a chair I'm taking in the garage right now. <laughs> so you shit in your pants with no panties on. Did it trickle down your leg? A little. Then you shit your pants. <laughs> so for, there's a first a time little. for everything. <laughs> Welcome to the I, club. There was a, uh, there was a, I don't know, maybe it was like an Instagram story going around the other day, and it's like, when's the last time you laughed so hard you cried? And I was like, really thinking back, I was like, ooh, but now I have this right here, so yeah. we're good. It's a little demoralizing when you shoot yourself, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It's always kind of funny though. It's never not funny. So how about your weekend? I went to a baby shower. All the way into San Diego. I spent the weekend in San Diego, a mm -hmm. whale's vagina, with my best friends from childhood. This is crazy, but all of my bridesmaids who are like my childhood besties, mm -hmm. every one of those bitches is pregnant. Like how many? Four. Whoa. At the same time? Yeah. Well, Haley just gave birth. Right. Jessica's pregnant with a girl. 
I don't know if I'm allowed to say that. Oh. <laughs> Chris beep that what's the time? 10. Okay. No, no, no. I think it's okay. I think it's okay. Yeah, you think it's okay? And then you need to know. We're just going to. I think it's fine. <laughs> so Jessica's pregnant. Kate's pregnant. Also with a girl. Also okay for me to say. I'm having a girl gang. All girls? Mm hmm Haley had a girl. Kate. Oh, and big news. Okay. You're pregnant? No. Well, then I don't really care. No, listen, this is crazy. This is crazy. So I, with my friend Katie, I have this thing where I, she's already had a baby. She, her, she has a son named Mark. He's the water king. Mm. And she wanted, she's like been thinking about having a second baby. And I, I, I like to play this game where I like, I'm a doctor and I can always, you know, like diagnose pregnancy or meningitis. Or everything, really. Mostly it's pregnancy and meningitis. Those are the two things I'm really what good at diagnosing. What is meningitis? It's a horrible disease. <laughs> horrible super infectious disease and have you ever got it correct like you've told one of your friends hey you have meningitis and it was right no so then why are you an expert <laughs> at predicting it mm, it's pretty easy to spot meningitis when you see it you know it you know what i mean like it's i don't like, even know what i'm laughing at what if this is like so problematic <gasps> no it's not i'm just saying meningitis you get like a purpley rash you get a horrible fever Where? anywhere really google it google these things so it's Anyways, not vagina okay. let me finish okay. my story okay. jesus christ so Katie has a son, Mark, the water king. He's also an office manager. Anyways, moving on. That little guy's two now. I told Katie, I will let you know when you're pregnant again, because I will know, and I will tell you. I will say, hey, bitch, you're pregnant. And so before Kate's baby shower, like three weeks ago, I texted her. I said, hey, do you want to make Kate's baby shower about you? Because you're <laughs> pregnant. And we can tell everyone you're pregnant at Kate's baby shower. I'm sure Kate will understand. She's uh -huh. a middle child. She gets it. And Katie was like, mm, OK. And I was like, wait, are you actually pregnant? And she like let it hang in there and I, I started spiraling. I was like, are you pregnant? Like what's going on? Like, are you pregnant? Can I call it? And she was like, no, I'm not pregnant. And then I was like, oh man, you just really bitch assed me. Even if you feel like a fool. I thought for a moment I was right. I picked that little girl up from the airport. She's wearing a t-shirt, growing our tribe. That bitch was pregnant when I fucking called it and I always know. And did she know at that time? Yeah, she knew at that time and she fucking lied to me because she's a psychopath. <laughs> <laughs> but we're adding to the clan. And do any of them uh, want to be a surrogate? No, they're having their own kids. I know. <laughs> but do any of them love being pregnant? Haley does, but you'd have to wait probably a year. Okay. I've talked to Haley about having your baby. And? She's down. She loves being pregnant. Okay. Yeah, it's a big process that yeah. I'm realizing. You got to go get your eggs. Pick who's ever sperm you're suckling up in there. And then we'll just... I'll shoot it into Haley for you. Because <laughs> I gave birth to her last baby. Okay. <laughs> But yeah, so my my tribe is growing, and all of my friends are pregnant. Wow. Yeah. Well, that's exciting. They'll all it's, have friends. Yeah, and they're all going to be like the same age, and they're going to be ridiculously cute. Wow. Yeah. And here we are. Here we are. We have a Chris. <laughs> yeah, we're taking care of Chris. <laughs> we're taking care of Chris. <laughs> it's true. He's a full-time job. <laughs> and somebody's got to do it. Somebody's got to do it. Oh, his I also... Oh, what, did you, what were you going to say? I said his ex won't. Oh. I'm, just, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. Oh. I'm kidding. I, would, I would bleep that out. <laughs> Talk about a too soon moment. Even I knew it. I was like, oh, Chris, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, multiple comments in the comment section are people who are ready to ride at dawn to fucking murder your ex. Uh. Did you read the comments, Chris? I read a couple. So many people were just out here riding for support. you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you want me I to love picture? them. What? Oh. I'm putting him on. Okay, here, I'll put him on. Let me, uh, my toes so close. I, I feel like you're going to do something. I'm, like, oh, ah! I'm freshly pedicured. Look how cute. The blue I, is cute. Thank you. And I have little pink clouds and, and heavenly skies. You're really trying to make us add assets of these? They are really cute, though. They're I need the, We need to make assets out of it so that I can make it a tax write-off. Continue, Chris. You are kidding me. I uh, did read the comments, and the comments were really nice, and I appreciate everyone. They're so sweet to me. <laughs> I'm not used to be people being so nice. <laughs> also, another red flag about your ex-boyfriend. Back oh. on me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> hey, 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 hey. Let me do it. Um, okay, Lizzie. I'm so close. Oh, oh, oh what's, my God. What's the green? Lizzie, what did I the green swear mean? to God. <laughs> what did the green mean? If we lose what we recorded because of your fucking feet. Did we? <laughs> I know this is just a play for you to get more wiki feet photos. No, it's I, we're out of frame. Okay, tell me. If I wanted wiki feet, it'd be up here. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> this is where they'd be showcased. All right. 
You the hook. The, the we match. Nail. Tell us about your Valentine's Day plans. <laughs> I have jury duty. No. I'm going to the Burbank courthouse. Oh. But I'm going to say, listen, guys, I can't keep a fucking secret. So if you want me to not <laughs> talk about what I hear in here, you should probably not have me here. You're like, I also <laughs> have a podcast and I will. <laughs> listen, guys, I've got a audience that needs to know what I'm up to. <clears throat> and if this is what I'm up to, they're going to know. I really am going to say that because it's true. I can't keep a secret. Can you imagine somebody else who was less good for a jury? Wait, does that mean it starts on next Monday? Uh, what does that mean for us? Oh, we got to talk. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess we're talking now. <laughs> Looks like we're Sunday girls. <laughs> um, no, I'm in, a, I'm in a motion to dismiss because I can't be impartial. Because <laughs> if it's meningitis, I'm gonna call it meningitis, girl. You can't fucking tell me. Um, and then also, uh, I don't know if you noticed, but in the comment section, a lot of people were like, "Let her shoot in your backyard." Great news, guys. She's shooting in his backyard. It was never that I wasn't gonna let you shoot in the backyard. It was your approach of saying like there was no ask. It was like I'm shooting in your backyard, and if not, I'm walking from the podcast. Yeah, I told you I needed this. <laughs> So all you had to do is say like, oh my gosh, hey, can I please shoot in your backyard? But it was the definitiveness that made me defensive. I think I started with that. Defensive. And the, right. But I started with the nice ask, but immediately before you could respond, followed it up with, I need this and I'll walk from the pot <laughs> if you don't give it to me. <laughs> <laughs> so she's shooting in our backyard. I hope it's something that you're going to share with us. I'll share it with you guys. We don't have a sound guy, so it's not going to be great, but it's called eating monster ass. And I think it's pretty great. I got my monster stuff in the mail last week. Well, maybe we could, once it's finished, maybe we could drop a link below and we can discuss. Sure. Don't hold your breath, though, guys. <laughs> I tend not to release anything I make. <laughs> <laughs> They're all secrets. I've been having no life. I was like looking through what I always do before the podcast. I like look through my camera roll to like see if anything happened to me the week before that I could share with all of you that would might be groundbreaking. All of my 10 minute stories are never groundbreaking, but... <laughs> The other day, I was like, Liz, you need a good story for the podcast. And she goes, why? I'm sure you'll talk for 15 minutes about nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Am I wrong? No. <laughs> Thank God you shit your pants, though. That story takes the cake. <laughs> you can write off your wa laundry detergent now. Oh, my God. <laughs> um. That's a whole nother story. Lizzie and my brother and finances. No, don't you dare bring up your brother. Okay. Don't bring Austin into this. So He's a good man. I realized all I did last week, I've lost my editor because Shane's busy again. Yeah. Shane's doing all of it. He's still like jumping in to help me when I need and like when I'm like, oh my God. Um, so he's like still helping, but I am I did take on the majority of the vlog last week and the one that's coming this week and it's resulted in me having zero to no life. Yeah. And so the most exciting thing that happened to me last week was after I finished everything, I went to yoga on Thursday. I love that for you. I've been asking you to go to Orange Theory every day. I know, but then you were going to San Diego and stuff, but I realized... I hadn't been to yoga for um, over a month because of coronavirus. Oh. And I like had a groundbreaking moment for myself where I was like in yoga and I was like, wow, I'm fucking good at yoga. Like not to brag. No, you are. You've been doing yoga for yoga. like over a decade. Yeah. Right when I started, when I moved here and had no friends. Like, yeah, that's, you're a yoga master. And so, but not having been able to do it for a long time, I was like, oh my gosh. Because I don't really have hobbies. Like all of my hobbies turned into my job, you know, like yeah. this podcast, <laughs> I film my life, like my life is my hobby basically yeah. and so i was at yoga and i was like wow i'm good at this and i guess it's my hobby and it is nice i think to like put your phone down for an hour and like detach from the world and do something that isn't for everyone else i love that yeah i really want to start doing yoga well will you come with me yeah all right it's just like what we were talking about in colorado and this is so boring but it's like how many monthly subscriptions can i have to these gyms before i have no money left i do class pat like i buy like 10 at a time right right oh. 
Didn't mean to kick that. <laughs> You're playing Wordle? You're a Wordle Squirtle? No. So here's the thing. <laughs> what? Well, do you know what Wordle is? I mean, I can't stop hearing about oh, it. Oh, God, me either. And I'm so, it's. it reminds me of like when Olivia Rodrigo came on the scene and like people Everyone couldn't shut think, up about yeah. it. And I was like, I'm so happy that you guys all have found something for yourselves. And then six months later, I like discover it for myself on my right. own timeline. And I'm like screaming from the rooftops. <laughs> like, yeah. How amazing Olivia Rodrigo this is. This entered my sim. I'm just wondering if that's going to be wordle for me because i right now i'm just annoyed by everyone's instagram stories i heard wait how many days ago did you shit yourself last night (laughs) oh it was last night well i heard like a couple days ago the word was shart oh and this is another thing and it's like i'm just gonna call it out now there are certain things within my reality that have been like happening in weird repetitive ways that make me feel like what the fuck is going on here Mm -hmm. you know what i mean like the name Elaine keeps popping up. Oh my God, I sound like my dad. <laughs> <laughs> my dad has this weird thing where he's like, I love a good coincidence. Like I was thinking of the word and, and then I drive by a billboard and there's the word and. Oh. So okay. things like that. So, but like I've been having that too. So it's like I'll be scrolling through Instagram stories and like a girl will be singing a cappella, like with their friends, like a song. And then the next story over from a person who's not even related to the previous person is playing that song as their music choice on their story. Like weird shit like that. And then also just the name Elaine keeps popping up over and over and over. We're going to have to look into that for you. Yeah. Then Sh- it's weird. It's Sh- fucking weird. Shane went to a, like somebody had gifted him a psychic session or a medium session for uh, Christmas. And it was like insanity. Maybe you should go and really kind of just see what's going on with Elaine. Maybe. My friend Eve used to give me like a psychic reading every year for my birthday. And like it was super funny because it was three years in a row that she did this. And like every time I saw a psychic, they would say something. And this is before I got sober. They'd be like, you're like full of lies and weird secrets. And it feels like your life is unmanageable. And I'm like, you don't fucking know. You don't know me. (laughs) That's not my story. And then like the last time I went there, like, come on, stop. Fucking figure it out. Get your shit together. And and that was the year I got sober, actually. Wow. Yeah. I thought that was very funny. Three unrelated mediums being like, are you a drug addict? See, and I think a lot of times, like, I'm the most skeptical person in the world, but I do think, um, like, yes, sometimes for entertainment, people have to fill an hour, but I think there is a common thread of, like, something that a person does get, and that being that is insane. Um, It's uh, something that I find low-key disturbing, but also kind of funny is synchronicity. mm -hmm. Do you know about synchronicity? I've seen the movie. Oh, well, you know, it's the general thing of like what I'm saying with Elaine. It's like when I see these things in places, it's a synchronicity. It means like I'm on the right path or something like I should follow these synchronicities and see what they're where they're leading me, basically. And uh, then I watched this like YouTube docuseries that got picked up and aired by, I think, Amazon called the Kentucky Goblin or Mm -hmm. the Kentucky Devil or something like that. But all they do is talk about these synchronicities. And I'm like, some of these aren't synchronicities. Some of these are like, y'all needing to chill the fuck out. (laughs) (laughs) Like, like they're like, I saw a piece of trash and it was a a broken birthday balloon and it was so-and-so's birthday. And on that same day, my friend was also digging in the trash and found another balloon. So it's like, we follow of these balloons into the forest and nothing was there and that's the end <laughs> i had i had a crazy one happen to me on the way to la like um we were listening to a podcast and i look up and we're we're like just hitting la and i look up and i see the most beautiful overpass i've ever seen in my entire life like stunning looked like out of a magazine i guess it's uh they're I have no idea, but it, on both sides of the overpass, like the most lustrous amount of trees, like it was gorgeous. Like it looked like a fucking picture with 500 trees lining the overpass. And then I look down and I'm listening to Ed Sheeran on a podcast, which like very random, like, yeah. you know, and then he starts singing a song that is titled Overpass. And I was like, whoa, it, I know it sounds like stupid so stupid but it but gave still, me it's like I, my heart fluttered it's like what does it mean it no. gave me full body chills and i was like how is it that i saw the most pretty overpass i've ever seen in my entire life and looked down and a song overpass is playing inside of a podcast and i was just like whoa i'm right where i'm supposed to be in this moment like i took it as yeah. the cr- like and, and i'm a ginger and you were coming home to me <laughs> exactly that's what it means folks <laughs> yeah but i haven't gotten chills like that from a scenario in a long time so it could mean nothing but still gave me full body chills yeah weird i love that um and then i guess the olympics are on 
Mm -hmm. <laughs> we missed this last year or was it two years I ago? I think we just have a hard time We're not like finding the fucks about the Olympics. You know what I'm saying? Like, well, I have a hard time finding regular cable. There's a redheaded man who like snowboards. Is it Sean White? White? Mm -hmm. This might be his last Olympics. Really? I, get, I don't know. I saw that on TikTok. Though. Chris, have you watched any of the Olympics? No. No, I'm not Chris. a sports person. The Super Bowl is also coming up, which I also know no, nothing yeah. about. No, yeah. I'm going to sleep through the Super Bowl. Same. <laughs> Joe's friends are buying food and bringing it to our house and I'm going to sleep because it's the day after our shoot here. Last year I tried to uh, even, I was like, Shane, let's order fun food because it's the Super Bowl. He's like, we're not watching the Super Bowl. And I was like, we could still order fun food. And he's like, no. Do you want to come to my house? I'll be sleeping, but you can hang out with the boys. What joy would I get out of watching football with them while they're pounding their chest? You might get into it. I don't know. You could be like <laughs> shitting your pants. They're pounding their chest. Everybody's having a good time. How your boys get about the Super Bowl is how I get about the Oscars, which they just announced the best picture. Yeah, we also really? shit about that. Mm. Well, I want it. I, I like in I I in in an alternate universe, I care about the Oscars. Uh, a woman I know is her film is actually nominated for best picture. <gasps> which one? The one that's about sign language and the deaf family. Coda. Coda. Yeah. What? No what I was gonna say DACA. I'm so bad. <laughs> what are the best picture nominations, Chris? Oh. Movies we haven't seen. Hold on. West Side Story right might be one. Yes. Even West Side Story. Coda. I mean, it's I really good. It, but it's crazy that like a film that's gotten so much praise just like fell flat. West Side Story. Mm -hmm. Did it fall flat? I don't think anyone went to watch it. That's true. Financially, it didn't oh. do well, but it's. A gorgeous film. Um, the nominees are Belfast, Coda, Don't Look Up, Drive My Car, Dune, King Richard, Licorice Pizza, Nightmare Alley, The Power of the Dog, and West Side Story. Nightmare Alley is the film with what's his name's penis in it. I don't. It's Guillermo del Toro directed. The trailer Bradley was Cooper's. fun, but Bradley I, Cooper's yeah. penis. Is that the one? That's Nightmare Alley. His penis is in it? Yeah. I'm going to see it tonight. Apparently he had his dick out for six hours on set or something. <laughs> Again, another virtual episode conversation that we had, and now I'm realizing you are a mm. fake fucking fan, Chris. Uh, he's busy here. <sighs> My life's in shambles. That's okay. Put him back on mute. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, Chris. Bye. Bye, Chris. Thanks for joining. Um, <laughs> what about Kristen Stewart? Was she, uh, was she nominated? The, I'll put him back on. No, wait, I gotta look it up. Can you just see if there's any nominations for Kristen Stewart? Because I really did enjoy that. And the other one I watched was Tammy Faye Baker, Jessica Chastain. Mm. I think it was Jessica Chastain. I know Lady Gaga got the snub. She was not nominated. I think the lead from West Side Story was nominated, the lady lead. Did you watch House of Gucci? No. Do you want to watch it? I have it at home if you want to watch it. Okay. You want to come over? Yeah. Will you watch it with me? Yeah, but we have to like lay in my bed. That's fine. Okay. Are you going to wash the sheets? Yeah, I wash the sheets every week, you bitch. Okay, I'll come over. <laughs> You're the one who didn't wash their sheets for a month. And you admitted it on air. Well, it's a hard job. <laughs> it is. It's so exhausting and it's so hot. <laughs> Should we get into some cold topics? Well, yes, but we're going to have to restart in two minutes. So I just was seeing if Chris found if my girl was nominated. I can't find it. Let me see. Who's your girl? Tammy Faye Baker? Or Kristen? Kristen Stewart. Just put nominees for Best Actress. What's going on with your thumbs? I don't have, uh, I have a, My Wi-Fi is not working. Oh, All right. Sorry. Well, let's cut and come back. There's some iced tea I'm real happy about. What take what's, marker? what's the iced tea? Oh, do you want him to tell your, your audience? Oh, my gosh. Yeah, Chris. Well, okay. Let him get his headset on before he... Take him off mute. Hi. <laughs> so Chris, hey. and the, the nominees for Best Actress are Jessica Chastain for The Eyes of Tammy Faye. Oh my gosh! Olivia Coleman for The Lost Daughter. I haven't seen. Penelope her. Cruz for Parallel Mothers. Nicole Kidman for Being the Ricardos. Mm. Oh, and loved you, it. You did. You watched mm -hmm. it. I and, loved it too. And the last one is Kristen Stewart for Spencer. Ah! <laughs> wow. I don't know who. Well, no, I do. Like Nicole Kidman. She's incredible and fantastic, but I feel like she's she's she probably has an Oscar or five, right? I don't know. You keep doing this though. <laughs> okay, it's fine. We don't need to look. But I feel like give it to Kristen Stewart. <laughs> uh, the only one of those films I saw was the being the Ricardos, mm -hmm. and I loved it. I loved it too. I loved it. I thought she was fucking fantastic. I did too. She's always fantastic though. Yeah. Like mm, love Nicole Kidman. Yeah. Okay, so Lizzie called her hot topics iced tea this week. It's getting hot. Why don't you join us for some iced tea? <laughs> I'm working on it, guys. 
<laughs> okay. Uh, what do you want to kick us off with first? Somebody's um, sibling has arrived. Stormaloo's first sibling has arrived. She has a baby brother. And is this a big day for you? Um... I don't know. Like, I'm big on Stormy, so I'm excited for her. I, I'm really looking forward to watching her shift into, you know, uh, an authoritative role mm. with a with a baby brother to care for. And right. I think she's going to be great at it. I'm Like, right now, I just hear her little voice, like, playing on repeat in my head. being like, good job, mommy. She's cute. Come on. What do you mean? I just... she give, Stormy is the only hope we have for the future. <laughs> but I, and I mean that. She's a good girl. Do you remember her say, patience, patience, well, didn't eat the candy, got so excited? God, her, have you ever seen a baby so good as Stormy? Her newborn brother has a lot to live up to. He really does. And honestly, like, I hope he brings it. So there's some crazy <laughs> shit going on, though. We, we don't know the name just yet. Right. But highly suspicious to me that it was that it, that the boy was born on 2222. Two, two, two. Right. So then Lizzie was telling me something else and I was like, oh my gosh, this is what rich people do. They pay to have their babies. I mean, a lot of people are like acting like it's psychotic to speculate that they would pick a due date. I don't think it is. Well, everyone picks a due date, but that doesn't mean it's No, you don't pick a due date. The doctor on. tells you what your due date is. <laughs> <laughs> and you can like plan if you want to. Like you can, but it all depends on like when a woman's ovulating. But like when you get pregnant is when you get pregnant and then your due date is based off of that. And but if you need to have a C-section, you pick your due date because that's the day you go in for surgery. Right. If and you're it, past your delivery date, the doctor chooses a date for you to come in to be induced. Well, I feel like the doctor, if you're having a C-section, gives you a window of probably like, I'm not an expert, but probably like a week or something, right? Maybe, And then, yeah. of course, if 2222 is in that vicinity, then yeah, you're going to pick 2222. I doubt Kylie had a C-section. Like, we would know. Uh, well, then, so it was all natural and meant to be. Like, the, the, the woman's lucky. I mean, I don't know. That's the other thing. It's like, <laughs> can't you pick to be induced? It doesn't seem like she's lucky that she has her firstborn on the first and her secondborn on the second. Like, it seems like a Kylie plan. Well. And I'm not judging it. You know, I just. I just feel like, what are the fucking odds? And I, and then it's like, there are no odds. Kylie is rich as fuck and picked to have her baby on the second. Yeah, but I think picking takes the magic out of it. Like, it, it. That doesn't mean she didn't do it. But if you force the two, 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 then that takes away any majesty around it i don't know that that's what majesty means uh, yeah but you, you know what i'm <laughs> but trying to I do convey think, yeah i mean let's hope kylie hears what you're saying here and feels bad about the choice she made now <laughs> well i was thinking too i was like oh this is some rich people shit but then crazier stuff has happened like i yeah. think courtney's kids are born on the, on the same, same day, day four years apart yeah and even crazier my brother and my dad have the exact same birthday wild 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 and i'm what 11 12 13 14 three days apart so maybe there's just a time of year that specific couples like to get freaky. Yeah. And then it all works out in their favor. Maybe it's all a fucking simulation. I mean, definitely. For sure. None of this is real. No. No. Mm -mm. God, I feel so out of my body when I realize these things. So when <laughs> nothing matters, what should we do? I want to go get a tattoo. Don't you already have some? Yeah, I need to get a few removed. But I also would like to go like, let's go get a lobster. Like, what if I just got a tiny no, little lobster we're right over here? No, red lobster. No, we're not. I recently, oh my God, I got a gift card to red lobster this weekend. And continued to tell me she's over it. Well, it's just a little depressing. And like, honestly, I'm not over it, but I do feel like. Divorcee vibes. Right. I, <laughs> as it, I, like, it feels like. We should like, take Chris. Sorry. Let's take Chris. Please. Wow, you're being such a bully <laughs> to Chris today. It's not bullying. I'm saying, I would like, say let's it's get bullying. No, we've previously discussed. Are you okay, Chris? Stop it, Lizzie. I'm <laughs> making sure my friends are okay. Says the person that says, mute him. <laughs> what are you doing, Chris? You're always <laughs> screaming at Chris. Yeah. I'm saying, we said, Red Lobster gives the vibe that you're taking the waiter home. Yeah. Chris might need to take a waiter home. Let's take Chris to Red Lobster. And, okay. and how's Magic that Mountain? any different than what I said? I don't know. It was the way you said it's for divorces and then let's take Chris. <laughs> that was the tone. You're right. I'm sincerely <laughs> sorry. I now feel um, compelled to take us to Magic Mountain. Let's and go. I'll, I'll treat us to Red I Lobster. Prefer Universal. Let's oh, let's go to Universal. I have season passes. Okay. Sick. Sick. Cool. <laughs> um, in other Kardashian adjacent news, uh, Celebrity Big Brother's on. You know, well, Big Brother's my favorite show. So, are you watching, Chris? I love it. Wait, 
You're watching? Yes. Who do you think's going to win? Oh, I don't know. I'm really bad at predicting these things. Well, anyways, <laughs> the story is I, I really feel like Lamar took the gig so that he could publicly. Is it Lamar Odom? Yes. He could publicly so profess Curtis. his love for like all he does. All his storylines are him talking about how he misses Chloe. Of course. He and he'll wake up Chloe. and he'll be like. I dreamt about my ex-wife last night. And then it prompts like the person next to him to be like, Chloe? Shut the fuck up. Well, no, he's always like, my ex-wife. And they're like, Chloe? And he's like, yeah. And he's like, I just miss her. Which, yeah, Chloe's hard not to miss. Yeah, she's a snack. She's been done wrong too many times. Yeah, what the fuck? Did you hear that there was like a brief moment in time where they thought Chloe was dating uh, Harry Jowsey? The TikToker? Yeah, well, the love is... Or the too hot to handle. Oh. Which, thank God that's not the case. But honestly, for a minute, I was like, she would go for something toxic like that. <laughs> like, that checks the fuck out. And her sisters need to sit her ass down and, like, make sure she stops it. I was going to say, this is the first celebrity big brother. This is the first celebrity big brother where I actually, like, know a lot of the celebrities. Who are the celebrities? I um, I didn't until they started giving their back. Like when I saw the photo list, I was like, I don't know any of them. But then they go down and you kind of know all of them. Like Carson Kressley from the original Queer Eye, who's actually really funny on the show. Like he is, is he the blonde one? Mm-hmm, he's Love the comedic him. relief. Todrick Hall. Know um, him. Lamar Odom. Know him. Travis Barker's ex-wife. Don't know her. Is it her name like Omaha or something? No, it's like shit. It starts with an S. Chris Kirkpatrick. Chris Kirkpatrick. He's the Leave Britney Alone. In, no, in, in no. <laughs> he's right in. He's one of the guys. I in was NSYNC. a Backstreet Boy girl, so like I don't recognize NSYNC. <laughs> Todd Bridges. A previous SNL guy. Who's Todd Bridges? I don't know. <laughs> Who's Todd Bridges? I, I'm watching the show and I don't even different know. Different strokes. Chris, he was oh, on different yes, strokes. Oh yes, 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 yes. I know who you're talking about. Yeah. Also, what's an actor, different strokes? An actor. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, Chris, K- Chris Kattan. From oh, SNL. Chris Kattan. Yeah, mm-hmm. we love Chris Kattan. Oh, there's a song that I always think is going, Chris Kattan, da 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 Microsoft Chris Kattan. Do you know what I'm talking about? I think so. How? Do, what is that song? I don't know. I Put that phone away. Don't even Google it. It's not worth it. Oh. All right. Our next story. Our next. Okay. So here's something that I feel like morally complicated about. <laughs> Same. And I don't really necessarily like know how to handle it because I've already like gone past my own personal barriers in regards to the situation. Okay. So the show on Hulu. Much anticipated for myself. I waited a whole fucking month for this show with everyone saying that it was going to be the best show on television. Pam and Tommy Mm -hmm. or Tommy and Pam. Not sure the order of which those names fall. Um, which is about Pamela Anderson and Tommy Lee's leaked sex tape, mm-hmm. which was kind of the first of its kind right. to go super viral before the internet, but also during the internet without it being actually on the internet at first. Right. Yeah. They sold the sex tapes because well, they couldn't get any. I watched. The, are you watching? When you, yeah. But when you say they, it's not Tammy. It's not Pam oh, and Tammy no, 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 or no, Tommy. No. Jesus Christ. A house contractor had stole yeah. the tape. Right. Spoiler alert. Just kidding. I mean, is it? No, it's not. I said just (laughs) kidding. But anyways, so Pam Anderson is a woman who has survived a lot of fuckery and bullshit Mm -hmm. and is very strong and has prevailed and has stayed beautiful and wonderful and grounded her entire fucking life. And a lot of people, I don't think, would recover from what she's been through. Right. And so this tape was stolen property. That she did not consent to have stolen, you know, and sold and aired. And she viewed. still never made any money off of it. That's not true. That's what I. That's really, really. That's not true. Okay. Um, because they eventually won a lawsuit that gave them back the rights to the video, and they had to do a one-time streaming of it for that to work in their favor or something like that. Okay. But I believe that that's something that we we can Google and fact check. Um, but anyways. The fact that she didn't consent to all of this and then did not consent to the TV show makes me feel cloudy about watching and enjoying the show. And granted, they've done a really beautiful job of not of vilifying the right people and humanizing everything, but the whole show in and of itself is a bit of a parody. I think they come across as the worst people ever. Like, I know that it doesn't come across as she wanted to sell her sex tape, but I think they come... 
across as so, so stupid out of this world rude yeah. ridiculous awful horrible people you wouldn't want to be close to at all pam you feel a little bit of heart for you like, feel for her but tommy is such a cunt and i don't know if that's his, how uh, he is in real life i think that the that is how he might be seen in real life like he was part of a huge rock band and right. then you know has sort of continued into this decade and as a bit of a twat I understand your apprehension on on them not having co-signed the project. I don't give a fuck what Tommy co-signs. I'm going to come out and say it. I'm not a huge fucking fan of Tommy Lee. Not I, here for it. I think it's cute that he likes his little bonsai gardens, but that might be the only redeeming quality about this man. And I know nothing about him. Um, I, from a content standpoint, I heard so much rave about it. And I yeah. think, I think, it's shot beautifully like it's very like it's lit. i love it i the love way that this show. it's lit yeah. is like takes your breath away um the performances are are great great but it's a little too slow it's like it's something's missing for me it's not oh, really yeah i'm not like glued and jaw dropped and like waiting for the next episode i'm like if there's nothing else on i guess i'll go back oh wow no i'm really loving it i think seth rogan's doing a beautiful job i think they're like making that character a bit of an idiot boob but also like humanizing the abuse that he faced at tommy but from tommy lee mm -hmm. which motivated the initial robbery right and again like i'm just kind of like landing on like Ugh, tommy lee sucks he is the kind of guy that would have a conversation with his baby arm dick mm. speaking of the prosthetic penis the prosthetic penis is all the rage this year in television who else had one Everybody in Euphoria. You think those are all fake? They've all said they're fake. None We've of... talked about this together. No, we haven't. Yes, we have on the podcast. No, we haven't. We said the only real dick was the one of the guy that sat down in that first episode to piss in the toilet. I think the like toilet. the young cows and stuff when they're showering in the locker room. You think those are stuff. those could be yeah. real dicks? Cal's dick is fake. There were a couple that were yes, a couple. Um, but this one, like ever, I guess because it had movement and everything. But yeah, it was like you fully could see animated. the like you could see where they were hiding his previous dick, which I saw his previous dick, his real dick, <laughs> and I saw that he went. And got a live cast so it would fit more snug and all this stuff but what i thought was more like weird is like the article talking about it pam the actress who plays pamela also has prosthetic titties, titties. And they had to make like five or f like 50 different sets because they kept rubbing mm -hmm. i also have all of these things at my house <laughs> Like, we have a bunch of fake titties. We have a bunch of fake dicks. I made a short film with a fake dick in it that YouTube won't let me put up because they think it's a real dick, but it's clearly a fake dick. It's tied in a knot. But why in the article can they show her full-on titties, but they blur the penis? Like, there's still, like, this weird... Oh. And that's what I was saying in a previous podcast about Euphoria. I was like, thank God they're showing dicks because they're always making women stand full frontal and showing their yeah. pussies and vagina, whatever that vagina. The pussies and their pussies vaginas. sounded aggressive. <laughs> Sorry. Um, Let me walk that back. Their vagina. And so yeah, they're like showing penises on television now. But even in this article, they're showing the actors with her prosthetic tits out, but they're yeah. blurring the fake penis. And I'm just like, it should be all or nothing. I also feel like if it's fake, who fucking cares? Like that's not a real dick. Yeah. Very weird. I mean, yeah, I'll keep going back to the show. I mean, I'm gonna. Wa I'm watching the show. I feel cloudy about watching the show. I think it's pretty fucked up to do a show like this without the consent of a woman whose life is. But it's a good show, and it was such a public situation. I know you don't legally need anybody's consent, but it's a little bit gross to do so without. Right, and I. My pro the storylines are good. It's shot well. It's acted well. I think it's just a little too drawn out for me. Like I would like them to yeah, make I their storylines a little quicker. How many episodes is it going to be? Like twelve? I don't know. I don't know. But honestly, like they've told the story already. The tape's been sold. All right. So do you want to go to Sean Mendes or the? I do think that shit is weird. Did you click it? <laughs> I clicked it. I'm and gonna rip your hands off if you keep doing that. It's <laughs> like he found um, a Camila Cabello replacement. In that, I don't think that they're lovers. It looked like it. I think that she's like a shaman. I know. But it feels so, like you fuck this, after you do that kind of exercise. I don't know. It seems like a neti pot thing to me. But the backstory <laughs> is Sean Mendez was photographed like in nature with some bitch wearing bike shorts who's like got some cord connected to his septum going into his nose and in her mouth. And she's like breathing into him. And the whole point of this is like a detoxifying thing. Uh -huh. My first question is, you're Shawn Mendes. You're famous as fuck. 
why are you in public having some bitch breathing your nose through a cord? He loves it. Like weird this is choice, like, buddy. Do you not remember the zombie walking yeah. photos of him and Camila yeah. in the peak of coronavirus in Florida? Like they love getting people riled up in this sense. And I, I mean, listen, you never know with anyone's breakup, but I feel like if you're going to do this, this is something you do in your million dollar mansion, Sean. Yeah, do it in your fucking guest house, bro. I what? feel like this was a play to like make. Like show, I I don't know. Maybe it. It seems like an amicable projecting. breakup, but like, what is this? Every celebrity breakup seems amicable. Like they Until always release on their Instagram state. They and always, then it's deleted. They always release their like statements that are so like not in reality. Yeah. Just like we've we, consciously <laughs> uncoupled, but fuck that bitch. <laughs> I didn't mean it. We're we're fine. We're good. We're friends. We love. There's love. We love. We loathe. But he's always been very spiritual and very meditative. And Camila and him both have that in common. And I think uh, when you're that successful, you have to find something that grounds you when there's so much and sometimes around you. That's a shaman bitch in biker shorts blowing in your nose through a cord. And maybe his intentions were great, and I'm just being a bitch. I think we're both being bitches, but I also think it's gross. <laughs> Did you see him posting his like thirst trap at Runyon Canyon and then falling? Mm, yeah, I saw him stumble down that path. Also, should we go to Runyon and wait for Sean Mendes? <laughs> <laughs> so the Tinder swindler. <laughs> yes. Did you watch it? I did. I did, did too. Very fascinating. Kind of makes you want to be a Tinder swindler. No, it didn't. Yeah, this guy's off scotch free, and this and he fucking Ponzi well, scheme. Spoiler pen- alert. <laughs> Right? <laughs> I mean, yeah, but no matter if what. You haven't, okay, so it's a documentary that Netflix made about a real life story where this asshole man swindles women on Tinder, flashes his luxurious luxurious lifestyle. Says on that them, he's the heir of a diamond fortune and kingdom. Flashes the money, gets them on a private jet after the first date to some crazy location for fun, really like wows them. Yeah. And then after he's love bombed them and makes them fall in love with him, he's like, oh, I have a huge issue. Like, I need you to open a credit card. B- wait, before that, he puts them into a fake scenario that that makes it seem as if his life and her life are in immediate danger from his very vague enemies. quote enemies. And then I just like I was thinking about this. If I called you and I was like, "Listen, I'm dating this Diamond King. I had to take out a hundred and fifty thousand dollar loan to protect him from his enemies." My first question would be, "Who the fuck are his enemies?" <laughs> That also like why doesn't he just use like diamonds and it's easy to say like oh if I was a friend of somebody that this was happening to I would put a halt to it but what he would do in the lifestyle he would show them and then even with the first woman he like desperately made his case for needing her help because right. he was in danger and then he does initially pay her back for that first time right so she does think oh he's good for this we're looking for apartments together we're having children together we're like going all the way oh it's a brilliant scheme and on so his part he, and that's why i'm saying let's do it he's not even in jail right now he's still on tinder and swindling that's the spoiler alert he's rich as fuck right now selling lifestyle class packages he and uses, making fucking bank he uses the previous woman's money to get the next woman and then oh by the time God. that woman is drowned out for everything with so much creditors Dead. after her yeah. he's on to the next and after everything he only went to jail for six months and didn't get charged for f- anything these women and, and he's these- done it to t- like maybe a hundred women and they're wildly in debt still like that's where i just my jaw dropped in that the court system the credit card companies couldn't find justice for these women they're who had still opened- paying it off i know that's why i was like netflix should open a go fund me for these women at yeah. the end of the episode so that we can donate i mean i or like the credit companies should relieve the debt of these women and that, put it on the fucking swindler yes who's very well documented these women have like hundreds of thousands of pages mm. of text conversations showing that they've been emotionally manipulated and conned it, like there needs to be a relief for them and a fucking consequence for Simon Levithan or whatever his yeah, name is. Sens- we should put his picture up too, by the way, because he is literally still doing this right now today. And the whole point of the documentary was they were like, we might be fucked. We might be in debt. But now you know what the fuck Simon looks like because when they started sharing their story, they got a call from his current girlfriend. Yeah, talk about being that bitch, opening her phone and seeing an article that your boyfriend has swindled yeah. hundreds of girls. Everything's a lie. 
everything's a lie and the way he switches i just think as horrific as this is this man might have come up with the most brilliant scheme ever because he's yeah. he's scot free like i don't know if that's he's free you know what honestly that's one i've never known either so i say it very quickly i'm not convinced <laughs> it's not scotch free you know what i mean he gets off scotch free he's free uh he's, he's still, still doing he's this free. shit yeah and he has really fucked up all these women's lives yeah i'd like to lives. um you're welcome really good job there thank you the first four seconds of your fucking <laughs> vlog your travel blog our lives i know i saw some <laughs> comments being like who else needs lizzie here i'm like oh <gasps> i mentioned in the comment section gosh thanks guys <laughs> fascinating fascinating like at first i was like i don't know if i'm gonna be this interested in this and then like it's just so fucking it, enraging. It hooks you in about 20 minutes. Well, even that first girl, she's like, I'm texting my friends. I'm telling them that I'm going to get on a stranger's jet. And I'm just like, I mean, it's never would I fucking ever. I understand to a certain extent, like it, this is a one-time opportunity for her. She never is she going to be presented with getting on a private jet again. And it's like, like she said in the show, YOLO. She was like, I don't know. Yeah, Chris, if somebody I mean, was like, let's go on a private jet. Right, but they're like, have date. you seen Taken? He's like, let me take you to fucking Eastern Europe on yeah, a see, private jet. The, like, the different country is where Liam my... Neeson would be like, honey, please don't. Like, hmm. girl, I'm tired. I've been doing this for years, getting my daughter back from this human trafficking shit. Like, can you not? <laughs> and then what lo and behold it wound up being a fucking con thank god it was just for money and not her whole fucking body and soul <sighs> and love's crazy like after he has really convinced them that they are in love like i understand how the like a lot of the initial comments for these women when the article not the netflix thing came out were like you guys are so stupid how could this happen to you and it's like i understand how this happened to them like they were emotionally manipulated to the highest degree yeah i get it and at the same time, I feel like, uh-uh, you know what I mean? I, Something yeah. else is at play. You think you're about to marry into a diamond fortune. And honestly, that is something that needs to be, yeah. I, I'm not victim blaming, but I am saying, how about as a fucking group of human beings, we stop valuing materialistic things and start valuing quality of person well yeah and knowing the quality of a person you cannot you cannot know the 100 percent quality of a person within one day of meeting and then also you hear these women's stories how many days did you actually spend together before it was a completely virtual relationship because it sounds like maybe two or three yes and i i will say like a, a date i understand a day, not flying out of the country i understand like if you're in your young 20s and like there's this crazy opportunity for a fun date but i think like leave it at that because i'm sure there were multiple instances where their gut was telling them stop before yeah, the love real. had blossomed so i agree with you and i think if you're out there in the dating world be very very careful like yeah. shit's scary the world's scary yeah don't get on a fucking plane to eastern europe the okay fuck? we have five minutes we need to get into our for you recap i don't think we could do that in five minutes well let's try our best if not we'll go again i'm just saying that's a lot of pressure so what did you think so episode five of euphoria i feel like this well i mean i can't speak for you but everything that was um a problem for me a problem for you and everything that was made um fantasy like or yeah. like the glorification, the glorification and the sexification of, of sex and drugs all, all came that. to a halt in this episode yeah this was a big redeeming episode for me it doesn't mean i liked it i this was my least favorite episode because while i understand your horror with the glamorification of drug you know what i mean yeah glamorization of drugs that is it it's a it's while de dealing with something heavy it's like a fun fast-paced show that's it's an it's it has an entertainment quality to it whereas what i watched on sunday was not entertaining was to gutting me. it was emotionally exhausting i could not sleep after i saw it but i do think that's the fucking answer to the first four episodes that we saw where hmm. these are a sexy good fucking time and i know it's not a sexy good time to watch cassie puking in the hot tub like i get it that was a real ass moment that that I was psyched on. I was like, that is what it is. Because you like walk and you're like, fuck, bitch, yes, hot, bleh, everywhere. And Ugh. that's always what drinking was for me. 
feeling like the shit than waking up and realizing like, oh, I'm an embarrassing person who can't survive like this. But um, again, like I don't want to sit and watch a show where a young girl gets shot up with morphine mm. and sold into human trafficking. What the fuck? Like that goes a little bit too and that's too close for, that's too that's not something i want to watch and that's like while i understand it's good to show the realities it wasn't something like it was it was painful to watch like you're like you're like your body is in pain the entire time yeah. you're watching performance phenomenal so well done that it actually fucks you up and it yes. feels like you're watching a murder tape oh like I, that's what's so fucked and it's so beautiful and so good one thing that i will say like to lighten the conversation a little bit there are these funny things where everyone's like zendaya needs a golden globe like zendaya needs this award that award some girl's like no zendaya needs a fucking gatorade <laughs> that girl is fucking thirsty get her some electrolytes that bitch needs water <laughs> like yeah i mean she really is proving that she can do anything when it yeah. comes to acting and it was a well to, uh, it was hard to watch but i agree uh the only like light moment which still wasn't light was when rue outed cassie to maddie yeah. and that was that gave me a little bit of life in what was otherwise such a dark and painful episode yeah. which i know is also like so traumatic but we knew that it was going to get exposed eventually yeah. and the way in which it was exposed was also uh, very funny while serious and like maddie's reaction was crazy while sydney's just like tearing up um yeah that was super funny also cassie had that coming definitely was it also was this the same night as the birthday party because there's still birthday streamers on the ground that the girls are like walking through oh i don't know yeah there was like pink ribbons on the floor that the girls were walking through and it felt like it was soon after the party and i just feel like cassie's not going to be a human being until like 72 hours post party right and I apparently they shot this episode for a month. This one episode that makes sense is like a feature film, you know. Yeah, there's a lot going on. Okay, what other standouts for the episode? Uh, I love when Zendaya breaks into the house and she's like, "Hey, buddy, hey, buddy," and that the dog just sits on her lap. I was like, that is so what a dog would do. Be like, "Oh, can we get pets?" I sits. Wow. It was incredible. I mean, the way that they told her, that story was phenomenal. How it then turns into a foot chase and she's doing all of these crazy things that a drug addict would do. And I just like my mouth was dropped. I don't I hope this the rest of the series isn't like this just because it's like so painful to watch. I mean, I feel like we just uh, they introduced us to this psycho drug dealing bitch early. Mm hmm. Um, a lot of people are speculating that this is this season's arc. She is the villain. Whereas like last season, it was like Nate. Mm -hmm. um, it does feel like the baton has been passed. Um, and I don't know that I'm here for it. It's a little bit too punishing. It, well, like I do want to know how it ends because like even though they keep saying things like Rue is unredeemable, I don't agree with that. I think Rue is redeemable. Well, I think Rue is a good girl. I think Rue's a kid who was born with anxiety, put on medication before she could even figure out how to manage her own feelings. And there are a lot of studies now that say that like kids who are put on these things at a young age are more susceptible to addiction in adulthood. And then she's given the access to all of these pills while her dad's dying of cancer. And like, you know, when my godmom died, I was a fucking mess. Mm -hmm. I, that's when I really started like drinking, but the drinking was no longer fun. It was a coping mechanism. And I would be like, well, I'm the crying girl. And it's like, we would laugh about it in a sad sense, but it's still like, I was still the crying girl. Yeah. And there are, I don't think Rue is a bad fucking person. Well, they can go one of two ways. One is which the... And I don't want to watch her get human trafficked. Me either. And I am afraid of that storyline, the woman that had given her drugs to sell, like where's that going to evolve to? Yeah. Uh, my thought process is euphoria isn't euphoria without Zendaya. Yeah. So I feel like they're going to have to get her being sober by the end of the season so that next season somebody else can be the villain if they want this show to continue on which it did get picked up for a season three i saw that happened was that last week or this week it's now picked up for a season three so they're definitely not just gonna like i don't they can't just like 
Yeah. I mean, I don't know. Like, I literally leave movie theaters during rape scenes. Like, I can't handle that. Yeah, it was intense. Yeah. It was very intense. And even though I'm not seeing anything, I and even though it's like a blurred shot through a doorway, like, I'm watching that like a person who's going to be fucking sick. And I've been sick every episode. I text you every episode yeah. like, I'm going to vomit. Yeah. This is too much. <laughs> and I'm a dark bitch. Yeah. So I don't know. I do have to say, I think it is fucking wild how Sydney Sweeney looks picture perfect in every paparazzi picture I've ever seen of her. Yeah, let's end this on a high note. Yeah, she this has bitch. like a cat eye in every fucking image that's perfect. She's got a curated, cozy fucking sweater. So I just was going out to get my newspaper and I happened to be wearing a perfect gold set. <laughs> like what? Yeah. Why is she so pretty? Every picture of her in the from the paparazzi looks like a Maxim cover. Yeah, she's the embodiment of young Hollywood. God damn, girl. Good for her. Good for her. And I saw she just bought an insane no man well it's not even it's i love i love real estate so i'm yeah. always looking at like the real estate blogs and there and it popped up like sydney sweeney's new house and you know it's very um it's very it's like a spanish it's like authentic spanish style um and i was just like wow hell yeah matches <laughs> matches the vibe anyways passes the vibe check yeah all right you guys well that's all we have for this week um if you want to follow us on social media we're at the sip official we're also on there personally so is christopher robin um do you have anything else to say no me either chris chris no all yeah right. well that's it from us see you next week goodbye and, and that's, that's the, the sip, sip. <sighs> we could talk about what happened yesterday no, never <laughs>